Welcome. Welcome to HSPM 713, Information Systems and Healthcare Administration. I'm Rick Cates. I'm the GA for Dr. Singh, the professor for this course. This video is Part 1 of Module 1, Chapter 1, Introduction to Healthcare Information. Please turn to page 29 in your textbook. You're very fortunate because this particular textbook has a copyright date of 2013 which means the information is pretty up to date. As we all know in information technology, as soon as the textbook is, is written, it's obsolete. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk a little bit about ICD-10. So what is ICD-10? ICD-10 is a system that's derived from the International Classification of Diseases, which was developed by the World Health Organization to capture disease-related data. So why is ICD-10 so important to you? The reason is the naming convention that is used is how billing is set up or coded for reimbursement purposes. This is also the primary mechanism for reimbursement for Medicare and Medicaid. So you as a manager need to ensure that your organization is being reimbursed for the services that they provide. As an IT professional, you will share in the struggle many organizations will face with the October 1st, 2014 mandate to move from ICD-9 to ICD-10 coding sets. Coming up next is a video, really an infomercial. We're not endorsing AAPC, but they are a leader in medical training coders and they did a good job explaining what you will face as IT leaders. By now, you've probably heard a lot about the transition to ICD-10 in 2013. But how hard is that really going to be? 2013 is a long way away, isn't it? Let's try to put the transition into some perspective. First, think about the codes themselves. Right now, ICD-9 has about 17,000 codes. Let's try to visualize that. 17,000 feet is about halfway up Mount Everest. 17,000 miles is about three quarters of the way around the Earth. On the other hand, ICD-10 has 140,000 codes. 140,000 feet is nearly five times the height of Mount Everest. That's almost six times around the Earth. But the real problem isn't the volume of codes, it's the format. ICD-9 codes are three to five digits. The first digit can be a number or one of two letters. The rest of the digits are all numbers. ICD-10, however, has three to seven digits, and they can be a big mix of numbers and letters. So why is this a problem? Well, can your computer system input seven digits? And what about the systems that your computers interface with? So how will you upgrade? Which software will you use? How will you choose a vendor? How are you going to get trained on the new systems? Speaking of training, just learning the codes themselves will probably take 70 to 80 hours of training. Then you have to train your staff and everyone else in the office, the doctors, nurses, everyone, on the new changes to day-to-day -day operations. Will you need to develop new policies, new forms, new positions, reporting procedures, books, reimbursement policies, super bills, budget planning? How will you even know where to start? Thank you for watching, and I know Dr. Singh will go in greater detail some of the theoretical reasons for the changes to ICD-10. But I hope this video gave you an understanding of some of the struggles and trials and, and kind of exciting changes that are happening in the IT field.